And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will be discussing how the U.S. stock market has fallen into bear market territory and what exactly does that mean in terms of risk on assets, not just for the U.S. stock markets, but also global markets. And are we headed into a recession? Recession odds has jumped above 50% for the first time which means it's safe to say that we are headed for a recession in the next 12 months to a year and a half. And also, what are we going to be experiencing over the next six months to a year in terms of supply shocks and also demand shocks? We're going to see supply shocks when you see people running out to Walmart and Target and Costco afraid of you know supplies running out and stocking up on supplies and wiping out the shelves. Well, if China is exporting and we're importing so many goods from China and there has a slowdown with the supply chain there, we're going to see supply shocks where we could see shelves remain empty for weeks at a time because of people going out and hoarding supplies. And then the demand shock is going to come from the standpoint of the NBA just came out and announced that tomorrow's game where the Warriors and Nets are going to play will be played with no fans in attendance. That's a demand shock where people are not going to go out and spend money at sporting events or going to concerts. The NCAA just announced that March Madness will only be played with immediate family in attendance. So no fans will be at March Madness. This is going to be massive in terms of the effects, the effect that is going to have on the economy where money is concerned, where goods and services are being consumed because if people are afraid to go outside or they're quarantined and they stop spending, that's going to create this feedback loop where we're going to have supply shocks as well as demand shocks. Also, we're already hearing this idea of a fiscal stimulus package being put together. What exactly is that going to look like? So these are all of the things that we will be discussing tonight. As you come into the live stream, please like this video, share this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you're not getting my notifications, please join my mailing list. Go into the description, click the link, enter in your name and your email address. And this way I can email you and let you know when my videos will be uploaded or when I will be going live. Uh, I want to shout out everyone who's actually donated. Uh, Tacomba, thank you for the donation. Stacy, thank you for the donation. Samuel Smith, Angela White, and Dallas McCall, thank you so much for the donation. Uh, if you want to contact me, please follow me on Instagram. That way you can DM me directly. And if you want to support this stream financially, because when you're talking about the coronavirus YouTube does not monetize this type of content. So if you want to support this financially, my PayPal is in the description below. Also, real talk, I already have the video uploaded. It will be um, premiering tomorrow at 3 p.m. talking about Virgin Galactic. I think it's about like a 11 minute video just going into what I think and what are some analysts saying about that. Also, going forward, I'm going to try to keep these live streams around about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes because I'm looking at my analytics and I'm seeing that many of you, you really only view these videos from about 25 to 35 minutes. So rather than me stretching these out for two hours or two and a half hours, I'm going to start trying to just condense it into about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And if you can uh, see my screen clearly and you can hear me clearly, just type one in the chat real quick. So let me give it a second. <clears throat> And uh, progressive game changer, I agree 1,000%. A stimulus package is only going to be a socialism for the rich. I 100% agree with you on that. So uh, just type one if you can see the screen and hear me clearly. Um, I like your videos, bro. We had a, a disagreement, but I respect you after watching a couple of your vids. No problem. Okay, so everyone can see and hear me clearly. So uh, with that being said, guys, let's jump right into the markets and just see what's going on. Uh, so the S&P was down 140 points today. The NASDAQ was down 392. The Dow was down 1,464 1, points. The Nikkei was down 450. The DAX was down 36 points. And the FTSE was down 83 points. 
let's go over here to the s p as i've shown you guys before thank you for the donation 100 for sure in october we seen the fed jumping into the repo markets printing billions upon billions of dollars and right after that the market just rocketed and went off and i constantly tell you guys markets take the stairs up in a stair step fashion and it takes the elevator down and right here boom you see the market over the past two weeks wiped out all of the gains done so we are definitely in a bear market uh bear market basically means when you're 20 percent off of your current market highs and see this is why for people who are trump supporters and this is not about po politics here right i'm not here to tell you which political candidate you should be going for but when you bank your entire presidency of being reelected re and the success of your presidency on the success of the stock market well you can see in a matter of two weeks your entire re-election re bid could be wiped out so this is something that you need to be paying attention to because outside of the stock market you can't really point to anything else that trump has accomplished as far as main street is concerned we've been in a manufacturing recession for almost a year and a half because of the trade war and the tariffs that was put into place and we blew a hole in the deficit with the tax cuts that we gave to the rich and they didn't take that money and reinvest into you know capex reinvest into paying livable wages instead they just brought back their stock and paid out dividends and now we're running a trillion dollar deficit and we're talking about a fiscal stimulus package where we're going to waive the payroll tax and I'll get into that in a second. Here we have gold. Uh, gold holding up well. Those of you who follow me, you know that I am a huge, huge, huge investor in gold. I believe that rather than saving my money in a bank and losing 3% every year to inflation, I park 50% of my savings into precious metals. And this is exactly why. Because even though gold sold off for the past two days, the reason why you're starting to see a lot of the selling happen is because it's something known as margin calls or people having to raise collateral. And if you have a lot of money, uh, you have a profit position in, let's say, gold, and you're up 20 or 30%, and you need to raise collateral, well, you're not going to sell Apple, you're not going to sell Amazon, a stock that you may like, you're going to raise cash in assets that you're up. So this is really, to me, is just margin selling and collateral selling. This right now should be an opportunity for you to be looking to buy. And again, this isn't financial advice. This is just me telling you, this is how intelligent investors, they buy on red days, not, you know, on green days, because investing is about having a thesis. Why are you buying something? Why are you selling something? What do you need to see the market do for you to buy more? Well, if we're running a trillion plus dollar deficit and they're talking about more fiscal stimulus and the government's running a deficit and they're talking about waiving payroll tax, then that means that they're not going to get the tax receipts coming in, which means they're going to have to print more T-bills, send it to the Fed, and then the Fed's going to have to buy those T-bills with QE, quantitative easing. That means more money printing. So if you like gold and silver... This is the ideal storm for you to be buying precious metals. Now, also, you have to ask yourself, when you see the market going down, what is it that's going to make you get out of a position? So let's say that you're investing in airline stocks or you're investing in cruise stocks and you see a slowdown or quarantines happening or people are afraid to travel. That's not a buying opportunity. Right, because that's going to be a demand problem now. That means that people don't demand your product. So now that's giving you a reason why you may want to say, you know what? I don't want to buy this right now. So that's what investing is about. When the facts change, your opinion must change. You cannot be married to a stock. You cannot be a married married to a position. When the, when the facts of the market changes, when supply and demand changes, you must be able to change your investment thesis never get married to a stock a cryptocurrency an industry a sector because emotions have no place in investing so we can see gold is holding up well and this is exactly why you want to uh invest in it now bitcoin i wanted to draw this chart for you guys so you can see right now <clears throat> Bitcoin on a longer term and see I'm a bull in Bitcoin and that just so you guys can see that I'm transparent I'm not one of these guys who's just out here uh, You know just telling you buy Bitcoin buy Bitcoin buy Bitcoin buy Bitcoin 
that's where I have a bulk of my money in. I have a bulk of my money in Tezos, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, and a few other different crypto projects. But if you go back to the 28, the 2017 high where we had this blow off top, we have we've been in a downtrend and we've been hitting this resistance and selling off every single time. So a bulk of the mining is in China. And if China's having slowdowns, quarantines, etc., miners are going to be forced to have to liquidate because they may need to raise cash. So this may be a change. For me personally, I'm buying more. And I want to explain to you exactly why I'm buying more. See, what a lot of people don't understand is that when you come here and you look at Bitcoin, it has a market cap of only $143 billion. That market cap is extremely tiny. $20 billion flowed out of Bitcoin and it dropped 15%, right? It's a very, 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 very small market cap in terms of a global currency. And to highlight that for you, because, you know, I believe in giving you guys practical common sense information. Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are worth more than the entire Bitcoin market cap. <laughs> The Bitcoin market cap is one hundred and forty three billion dollars, one hundred and forty three billion with a B. Now we go over here to the Forbes list. This is the Forbes 100. Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are worth two hundred and twenty billion dollars. So two men are worth more than the entire Bitcoin market cap. So it's very easy for you to see the prices fluctuate because you're dealing with something that right now is a tiny asset in terms of a global asset. And this is the value proposition of investing in a Bitcoin or an Ethereum or Cardano, whatever crypto you're into, Ripple. When you're looking at in terms of this is a global market and two men are worth more than the entire the entire Bitcoin market cap. And if you take the top five guys, Larry Ellison, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, they're worth more than the entire crypto market cap combined. The total crypto market cap combined is $220 billion. That means if you take every single cryptocurrency and you take the market cap, these five men are worth more than the entire crypto market cap. So this is the investment opportunity that you have. You have a three to five year window that you're looking at. And this is why I talk to you about dollar cost averaging, not going in and just buying up a chunk. This is insignificant. And as I always state to you, the gold global market cap is $8 trillion. So you're not going to see these 5%, 10% swings in gold on a daily basis because it takes a lot of money to move the price of gold because you're dealing with a thick market. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, go and do your due diligence. You should never buy anything or sell anything based upon what I'm saying to you. So I wanted to put that out there. Now, let's get to what's happening with this whole idea of a fiscal stimulus package. This is the problem when you give the rich tax cuts when they didn't need the tax cuts. If the economy was doing so well and the economy was roaring and booming, there was no reason that you had to do that trillion dollar tax cut because see now we see what happened with QE. All QE is simply doing is the Fed is printing money out of thin air, going into the market and buying treasuries. That's it. You don't have to have a PhD. Just always say, just think about it. When I say quantitative easing, say printing money. When I say debt monetization, printing money. Fiscal stimulus, printing money. Printing money. Printing money. Now, it says, what you say about Cash App Crypto? Um, you could, I, don't, I don't know the exact question. Put, post the question again, and I'll, I'll look out for it, and I'll answer it in a second. So now, now, if they waive the payroll tax to help out businesses and small businesses, that means that's going to be less tax revenue coming in. So if less tax revenue was coming in, that means that there's less revenue to pay for the deficit, which means that they're going to have to go what? Make more T-bills, send it to the Fed, and the Fed's going to have to do more quantitative easing. Right here, if you look at the chart, the Fed holds a total assets of, right, on a balance sheet of $4.2 trillion. So now, if I have an investment thesis, and I believe in inflation, and I believe in printing money, is going to devalue the dollar. Why would I want to sell my gold? 
or should I be wanting to buy more gold? Right? See, this is what you have to understand. What's happened in the market today to change my investment thesis? This has made me more bullish on gold and more bullish on crypto because they're going to print money out of thin air. The tax cut should have never happened because it didn't benefit the economy. All the Fortune 500 companies did was buy back their stock and pay out dividends. And as I said to you before, again, this is a double-edged sword. Now, let's get to this right here. It says, the Dow average sinks into bear market on virus fears markets wrap. So, let's go here. It says, stocks plunged around the world. Oil tumbled and the stress in the U.S. credit markets deepened after the World Health Organization called the virus spread a pandemic and the Trump administration remained unable to detail any stimulus measures to combat the economic fallout. The latest bout of virus fermented turmoil tipped Dow Industrial Average into a bear market, ending the longest bull run in the history of American equities. The blue chip slumped 5.9% Wednesday and ended 20% below its February closing record. The S&P dipped into bear territory before closing 19% below its high. So again, we're talking about stimulus packages and stimulus plans. We're running trillion dollar deficits as for the eye to see. Less tax revenue is going to be coming in now. This is why you don't cut rates when you don't need to. And this is why you don't run large deficits. Now, it says the U.S. recession, a coin toss as chances climb to 53 percent within a year. So right here, it says chance of a recession within the next 12 months. Guys, I've stated before that we are at the tail end of this generation's roaring 20s, right? The roaring 20s says Cash App has Bitcoin, but I don't believe they give keys, but it's convenience worth it. This is why, uh, thank you for the donation. You have to get you a hardware wallet. A, a ledger is what I have, or you can download a full node. Get a full node, and I'll, I'll do a video on that tomorrow or during a live stream. I'll talk about that. You can go to Bitcoin.org, and you download the Bitcoin wallet, and you can run a full node. This way, you have your keys. So you can buy the Bitcoin on Cash App, and then you send it to your wallet when you're running your full node, or you can send it to your ledger. Uh, just simply look that up. But thank you. No problem. Uh, I'll, def I'll probably cover it again later on and I'll show you how to download the wallet and everything towards the end of the stream. It says Bloomberg Economics created a model to determine America's recession odds. The chance of a recession within the next year stands at 53 percent, the highest reading since the U.S. Ex exited the Great Recession in 2009 and significantly higher than the 24 percent seen in the prior months. The latest eco the, the latest update combines February reports, estimates for other figures not yet released for the month, and financial markets data from early March. Going back to what I was saying before, the last two times we've seen the Fed do emergency rate cuts, the market was cut in half. The last two times we've seen that. When they did it here, the market was cut in half. So this is telling you that rate cuts is not going to help this because we don't see this isn't a fiscal problem and this isn't a monetary problem. Fiscal is meaning, you know, government stimulus. Monetary policy is the Fed cutting rates, the Fed doing QE. This is going to be a uh, supply and a demand problem, a supply and a demand problem. If people are afraid to go out, that means demand's going to contract. Supply problem. If China is having people constantly being reinfected or they're operating their supply chains at 50 percent, that means there's going to be less goods being sent out. And I want to get to this last part and then get into the good stuff right here. <clears throat> this right here is the diminishing firepower, the Federal Reserve interest rate cuts and prior downturns. Right. This is why you don't have rates so low, because look at this before. During downturns, we were at 11 percent. We were at 6 percent at the Fed's fund rate. We had five and a half percent, five percent. We're only at one percent. We don't have too much more room to cut. The Fed cannot go to negative rates because they are the reserve currency of the world, which means what? They're going to print more money. And they're already talking about, as I did in the last video, about going out and buying stocks. The Fed is literally saying that they want to go out and buy stocks. Now, let's get here. 
why the coronavirus could threaten the U.S. economy even more than China's. Because remember, we have a highly leveraged economy. Everything we do in this economy is based off of debt, based off of leverage. And I tell you this all the time, guys, debt is money. Americans going into debt is what drives this economy. It's not about fundamentals. It's not about price discovery. It's about Americans borrowing money that they don't have going into more debt. It says if people stop traveling and going to the dentist, the gym, or even March Madness basketball games, the impact could be enormous, an economist says. After a string of deaths, some heart-stopping plunges in the stock market, and an emergency rate cut by the Federal Reserve, there is reason to be concerned about the ultimate economic impact of the coronavirus in the United States. So, right when I did this, this came out today. NCAA March Madness basketball games will be played without fans. So we're going to keep bouncing from this article and then bouncing into stories to show you. So think about that. March Madness is huge. Thousands of people travel from all over the world to come watch March Madness basketball games. Well, if people aren't coming to watch March Madness basketball games, those arenas aren't making money. Those local communities and small businesses that surround those stadiums aren't making money. Now, remember what I said to you. It becomes a domino effect. If people are staying at home, if schools are being closed down, that's economic activity not happening. Well, if businesses aren't making money, then how are they going to pay their employees? They're going to have to cut expenses. Well, if they have to cut expenses, they have to lay off people. If they lay off people, that means people making less money. People making less money means people spending less money. So now you get the supply shock and then you get the demand shock because now people aren't going to be out at these basketball games spending money. It says the National Collegiate Athletic Association announced the upcoming men's and women's basketball tournaments will be played with only essential staff and limited family attendance. NCAA President Mark Emmert said in a statement Wednesday, no public fans will be allowed to attend. This is going to be big. And this is why I said to you before, guys, don't get scared. Don't get afraid. Get prepared. Prepare for the worst. And hope for the best. For if the worst doesn't happen, at least you're prepared. But at least now you know that you have things in order to take care of what needs to be taken care of. And you're not going to be caught flat-footed when these things happen. It says the tournament will begin in Dayton, Ohio, and move to the Times Union Center in Albany, New York. Other upcoming NCAA tournament games are scheduled to be played at Staples Center in Los Angeles, March 26th through the 28th. West Regional Games. And with Emmer's decision on Wednesday, next week's NCAA Wrestling Championship at more than 60,000. It says, hold on. Wrestling Championship at the more than 60,000 seat U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota will be held without fans. 60,000 seat U.S. Bank Stadium will be held with no fans. Now, let's think about the NBA. <laughs> The NBA just announced the Nets Warriors to play the first pro empty arena game in the U.S. as a result of the coronavirus. Again, these are billion dollar brands, billion dollar generating entities and business opportunities. This is going to have rippling a ripple effect all throughout the economy. Uh, is Robinhood an app for purchasing Bitcoin? No. Because Robin, uh, Robin Hood, you're not actually purchasing Bitcoin. You're purchasing a paper version of Bitcoin. You can't actually send the Bitcoin out to a wallet. If you want to buy Bitcoin and you're new, I would use Cash App or I would use um, Coinbase. And I have a video on my channel walking you through entirely how to go and buy Bitcoin. Just search in my channel and you'll find a video on how to buy Bitcoin. It says the coronavirus pandemic will force the Nets and Warriors to play behind closed doors Thursday at Chase Center. It will be the first empty arena game in U.S. pro sports as a result of the virus. Due to escalating concerns about the spread of the coronavirus and a consultation with the city and county of San Francisco, Thursday's night game versus the Nets, and, uh, the Nets at Chase Center will be played without fans. Fans with tickets to the game will receive a refund in the amount paid, the Warriors said in a statement. So now the Warriors are losing revenue because they're refunding people money. 
They're refunding people money. Now, I also want to play this clip for you because remember, guys, I talked to you about problem, reaction, solution. Problem, reaction, solution, where I'm not saying that this is a hoax. I'm not saying that this isn't real. I'm not one of those individuals who just dismiss stuff and think everything's a conspiracy theory. But Rahm Emanuel said years ago, never let a good crisis go to waste. And you're going to see a lot of politicians pushing for things and laws to get implemented and enacted to do this. The problem is the virus. The reaction is people becoming panicked and afraid and scared. And the solution is going to be government trying to take away your rights. Think about 9-11. I'm not saying 9-11 didn't happen. The towers were knocked down. But behind that came the Patriot Act. And the Patriot Act did more harm to your freedoms and to your liberty <laughs> Then what happened, the war on terror cost us trillions of dollars. So they were able to push things on you because you were afraid. Be a three-dimensional thinker. Prepare for the worst. Hope for the best. So let me play this for you real quick. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. I think America as a whole in 1973 and 1974, not just my view, but obviously the administration, missed the opportunity to deal with the energy crisis that was before us. For a long time, our entire energy policy came down to cheap oil. This is an opportunity, what used to be long-term problems, be they in the healthcare area, energy area, education area, fiscal area, tax area. And now what you're seeing is you're beginning to see the National Guard deployed here in New York. And this is why I'm saying this to you. The road to hell was paved with good intentions. And you have to understand that you're dealing with politicians here who are going to try to milk this for political gain. Be smart with the decisions that you make. And this is why I was saying to you to stock up on supplies and be prepared because they're going to start trying to push certain things on you. And as you see here, it says New York sets containment zone and deploys the National Guard. So now we have the National Guard on the street. So now you got to not not your conspiracy theory hats, but just think a little bit as to what could possibly be going on. And I'm going to show you where I'm going with this in a second. So let's play this real quick. We're going to begin with that community just outside of New York City under a containment order this morning where a cluster of cases has broken out. The National Guard will be on duty there in New Rochelle to help enforce the one mile radius under the order. Whit Johnson is there with the latest. Good morning, Whit. Michael, good morning. Officials tell us about 100 to 200 members of the National Guard will arrive here in New Rochelle tomorrow to help clean and sanitize schools, public areas, and even deliver food if needed. Governor Cuomo calling this deployment a dramatic effort to attack this outbreak. At the and the reason why I'm talking about this is because I just want to show you some videos and I'm not trying to scare you, but this is what started in China where they just wanted to, you know, quarantine people, you know, clean things. And then this is what they started doing to people in China. You know, and again, I'm not here to scare you guys. I'm just letting you know things begin as a slow creep and it starts off as, you know, oh, this is just for your, your own good. Like this doesn't look like health facilities to me. These look like detention camps. This looks like a makeshift prison. And they're saying that this is a hospital. You know, you know, you have to start thinking about these things. And this is why you need to have a plan in place, places to go, supplies that you have, places that that you may be able to meet up with some fellow people like you have to start thinking about this stuff if this thing spirals out of control i am not here to scare you the dead will be removed from that door like th this is what this is in china now remember the the national guard is here in the states but i'm showing you what has been happening in china don't think for one second that that can't happen here don't think for one second that this stuff can't happen here you know show you another video that I have. They're literally sealing people in here. 
They're putting up, they're, they're locking people in their buildings. They're snatching mothers from their children in China. So I want you to be prepared. I want you to be a three-dimensional thinker. I'm not telling you that this has happened here in America. I'm not telling you with certainty that it will happen. I'm telling you that they're deploying the National Guard here in New York. They have 100 troops, 100 National Guard troops here in New York. And it always starts off as something small until it becomes something big. And they're to look for a reason to suspend your rights. So just keep that in mind. So let's get back to the article. Remember, guys, we're going to jump back and forth to the stuff. Be a thinker. Be intelligent and pay attention to what's happening here. It says advanced economies like the United States are hardly immune to these effects. To the contrary, a broad outbreak of the disease in them could be even worse for their economies than in China. That is because face-to-face -face service industries, the kind of businesses that go into a tailspin when fearful people withdraw from one another tend to dominate economies in high income countries more than they do in China. If people stay home from school, stop traveling and don't go to sporting events, the gym or the dentist, the economic consequences would be worse. I just showed you we, we're already seeing the steps happen. The NBA is telling fans they can't come to the game. March Madness, people are they're telling them that they can't come to the game. It says, in a sense, this is the economic equivalent of the virus varied health effects. Just as the disease poses a, a particular threat to older patients, it could be especially dangerous for more mature economies. Well, breaking news just came out. The CME group to close Chicago trading floor as a precaution due to the coronavirus. So now the trading floor, the trading pits, they're talking about closing them down. There's Wall Street's been closed. Certain investment banks have been closed down as well. Right. So th this is becoming a cascading effect. Again, what is that going to do to the demand in the economy? We got we're having supply demand shock and we're going to have the uh, we're going to have supply shocks and we're going to have demand shocks. Well, this is part of the demand shock. Going back to the article. <clears throat> it says this is not to minimize the indiscriminate and widespread damage that the disease has caused by disrupting the global supply chain with shortages of everything from auto parts to generic medicines and production delays in things like iPhones and Diet Coke. A great deal of pain is coming from the closing of Chinese factories that proliferate uh, that proliferating damage has central banks and financial analysts talking about a global recession coming in months. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to put two and two and come to this, put two and two together and come to this. It says, I want to show you something. The top U.S. companies by import and export volume. Think about this. Over 75% of the Fortune 500 has a supply chain based out of China. I want you to think about that for a second. So I want to, I want to show you where I'm going with this. Right here, these are the top 10. You have Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, Dole's Food, Samsung America, Family Dollar, LG Group, Philips Electronic, and IKEA International. These are all companies that has a manufacturing base in China, a supply chain in China. Well, China's only operating at 50%. So now we also know that the coronavirus can live on the surface of ships, on the surface of planes. So now... You have to also wonder, can these goods be contaminated if they're being shipped to us? This is a demand shock. Now, you got to think about the earnings of these corporations, right? This, if you start putting two and two together, you start looking at the dominoes and how they're going to fall. Companies already were struggling to meet earnings, which is why they were buying back their stock so that they can easily beat their earnings. Well, if people aren't consuming their goods and services, or they aren't able to ship those goods over here at the... the previous rate that's going to bring down earnings apple's already talking about that they're not going to be able to meet their earnings now why am i showing you that because now i want to show you 
what's happening with the shells. <clears throat> now this is at Costco. Think about this. Look at all of these people running out, cleaning off the shelves. Well, that's going to take away supply. And we know that we're not going to be able to get a good amount of supply back in there. Now you have to also think about infection. How many of these people right here right now could potentially be infected? So this is why I was telling you guys two weeks ago, go and get your supplies and stuff then so that you don't have to be stuck on these long lines and potentially risk getting yourself sick all over again, where now you can be at home with your supplies because after a week or two, we may not be able to get supplies back on these shelves. Now, yes, we do have FEMA and we do have government preparedness programs that will be able to bring stuff in, but I don't trust the government. I personally, I don't trust their supplies. I wouldn't want to trust them because in me, I, I just wouldn't want to be there, but I'm going to just show you guys a video. <laughs> So let's, let's skip this a little bit. Look at the shelves. Look how empty these shelves are right here. Just so you can see, it's happening in your face right now. It's happening. And remember, guys, I told you we were two weeks behind. So we're beginning to catch the tail end of what was already happened in Italy, what's happened in Singapore, what's happening in parts of China. Empty shelves, as you can see, empty shelves. Again, not, not trying to scare you guys, just giving you guys the information and allowing you to make informative decisions as to what you should and should not be doing empty shelves empty shelves again this is supply restocking as fast as they could so this is coles north rocks toilet paper aisle absolutely none left Moving on to tissues, a few left, but not much. This is the pasta aisle, absolutely nothing here. Some over here, which are more expensive, I'm assuming. These are people going out here. We'll get back to this video. So I just want you guys to see that I'm not making this up. You need you need to make sure that you have your supplies. And there's 325 of you watching this, guys. Please like this video. It helps the content get out there so more and more people can see this. You got you have to be able to pay attention and not, you know. Now someone said virus was probably a uh, bioengineer for economic terrorism. Whatever the case may be, Jarrett Barnett, I don't have time to play with my family's health. Whether this is a hoax. Whether this is bioengineered, whether this is chemical warfare, I don't have time to play with me and my family. I need to be prepared and have a plan. I need to have an economic financial plan. I need to make sure I have a supply plan. And I need to make sure I have a plan in case I need to get out of my home and link up somewhere with some other people. It's called being prepared. I don't have time to play the game as to where did it come from? Did it come from some government group? Or I, I could care less about that. I'm talking about what I need to have in terms of me being prepared for the things that matter. That's what I need. And this is what you should be thinking about if you are a three-dimensional thinker. Now, <clears throat> it says, as a baseline, several factors work against the United States. China's authoritarian government can quarantine entire cities or order people off the streets in a way that would be hard to imagine in America, presumably giving China an advantage in slowing the spread of the disease. Guys, 
What do I always say to you about 1984? About Orwellian speech, about double speaking. When you read these articles, what they're trying to signal to you is that they're contemplating maybe moving towards how China did to solve it because that may be the only way to solve it. Well, we've seen how China solved it. They locked people in their buildings. They built these makeshift hospitals that look like jails. So when you start seeing the news, the New York Times floating that type of language out here, that's Orwellian. That's insinuating something. That's putting the idea that, hey, we may need to do what China did in order to quell this. So you need to think about this and understand what this could mean. In addition, a large share, a large share of American workers lack paid sick days and millions lack health coverage. So people may be less likely to stay home or to get proper medical care. And 41% of China's population lives outside urban areas, more than twice the share in the United States. Diseases generally spread faster in urban areas. They're telling you that if you're in urban, heavily dense populations, it's going to probably spread and they may need to enact certain quarantine measures, which is why, as I said to you before, have a plan. Hey, if nothing happens, then nothing happens. But make sure that you have some type of a plan put in place. It says consider travel. The average American takes three flights a year. The average Chinese person, less than half a flight. So I went and I looked at kayak, right, guys? The prices on kayak crashed. The prices, look at this. You can, you can fly, you can fly to Puerto Rico for $122. I got some flights as low as $97 earlier. It keeps updating, but I just wanted to show you the prices are crashing. $122, $145, This is so now think about what this is going to do to the airline industry. Think about what this is going to do to airline stocks. So now what is that? What's going to happen to employees, right? Because if the company can't make money because demand, this is the demand shock, right? So I'm showing you supply shock and now you're looking at demand shock. Look at these flights, $112, $112. I've seen chip. I, I've seen some trips to uh, parts of China, like a whole trip for a week for less than $600. So you have to start thinking about the cascading effects. You can go here and you can play with this all day long and just see how cheap trips are, right? So, you know, if somebody asks me, well, uh, what's a flight to Africa? I don't know. I haven't really looked at that yet, but I'll look at it later. But you need to start thinking about this. This is a demand shock. So now when they talk about fiscal stimulus, yes, Okay, the fiscal stimulus may work, may not work, but it's still going to hurt Americans because in the long run, it's going to create inflation. So therefore, that inflation is going to actually hurt you. Because we know the government's running a deficit, which means that if they waive the payroll tax, that's less tax expenditures coming in, which means they're going to have to create more T-bills, that's debt, and send that to the Fed. And then the Fed's going to have to do quantitative easing and buy that debt. That's more money printing. So you're getting money printing on both sides and it becomes a cascading effect. So if you have an investment thesis and you believe in gold and silver and precious metals, nothing has changed over the past week. If anything, this should embolden you and make you want to go buy more. Right. This should make you want to run out and buy more. And when you read this right here from Investors Business Daily, United Airlines stress tests worst case scenario more dire than 9-11. It says United Airlines said during an industry conference on Tuesday that it could take a year and a half before air travel demand fully recovers in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, but predicted that the industry would largely be the same when it did. A year and a half. So this is what I'm saying to you. We see the recession odds, as we can see here, when you go here, the recession odds are at 53%. And I, guys, it, it should be much higher. Right? You you don't you don't have to you don't have to be a rocket scientist and a chemical engineer to figure. Demand shock. That's gonna cause people their jobs. People lose their jobs, people stop spending, people become fearful, then there's not gonna be enough supply on the shelves. 
that's going to equal this cascading effect, this domino effect that is going to push us into a recession. And as I said before, 1929 is when we had the crash of the stock market and we went into the 30s, which was known as the Great Depression. And I believe that the Fed is going to do everything in their power to prevent it, which means that they're going to print money and print money. And you're going to see coordinated stimulus. We're already seeing the Bank of Japan saying they're going to do this. The ECB saying they're going to do this. Stimulate the economy means print more money. We know that that's what it means. Helicopter money. That's why they called them helicopter Ben Bernanke. They are going to print money out of thin air. So again, if you have these investments and these type of assets like gold and silver, like silver mining stocks, you are hoping for this. <clears throat> Let's get back to the article. <clears throat> it says, the cruise ship stigma alone potentially affects about 3.5% percent of the United States, which has about 11.5 million passengers each year compared to only 0.17 percent of China, excuse me, which has about 2.3 million passengers. People may stop attending American sporting events. There have even been calls for the NCAA to play its March Madness college basketball tournament without an audience. But sports is a huge business in the United States. People spend upward of 10 times as much on sporting events as they do in China. Well, hey, go right back to the article, guys. I just showed you, right? March Madness just came out today and said only no fans at the game, only family and friends, no fans. The Warriors, they're going to play tomorrow against the Nets with no fans at the game. So this article predicted exactly what was going to happen, and we are seeing it happen right now. So this is what I'm saying to you. Going back to two weeks ago, I keep keep stressing this to you. Get prepared. Have things in order. Do not wait. Get prepared. These things have been in the works for years. Rahm Emanuel said, never let a crisis go to waste. He's telling you here, what, what the government plans on doing? You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. I think America as a whole... And this was Barack Obama's chief of staff back in 2008. Pay attention. Pay attention. It says, and if 60 million Americans stop spending 19 billion a year on gyms, that would be a much bigger deal than if the 6.6 .6 million gym members in China stop spending the 6 billion they devote to gyms. That's just the start. Who wants to go to the dentist or the hospital during an outbreak if a visit isn't necessary? Yet health spending is 17% of the U.S. economy, more than triple the portion spent in China. So for all the talk about the global supply shock set off by the coronavirus outbreak and its impact on supply chains, we may have more to fear from an old fashioned demand shock that emerges when everyone simply stays home. A major coronavirus epidemic in the United States might be like a big snowstorm that shuts down the most economic activity and social interaction until the snow is cleared away. But the coronavirus could be a snowmageddon storm that hits the whole country and lasts for months. Right? So like he said, no fans, no revenue. Exactly. So now think about it. No fans, no revenue. What is that going to do to the surrounding businesses? Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is I, told, I spoke about this. I've spoken about this before, and I want to speak about this again. It says, inundated with flu patients, U.S. hospitals brace for coronavirus. Now, remember, we're in the middle of flu season. And I just want to show you guys how we're so dependent on the Chinese economy for supplies. So supply plus demand shock. Watch me. Follow me here. Let's connect the dots. With an intense flu season in full swing. And this article was from February 7th, 2020, guys. So just so you can understand where we could put things in proper context. This is more than a month old, this article. So we they're predicting they were predicting what was going to happen. And now we're seeing it happen. And that's why I want to show you guys, because this is Orwellian speaking. 
It says, with an intense flu season in full swing, hundreds of thousands of coughing and feverish patients have already overwhelmed emergency rooms around the United States. Now hospitals are bracing for the potential spread of coronavirus that could bring another surge of patients. Thank you for the donation, Castle Dragon 78. It says... Public health experts are closely watching reserves of vital medical supplies and medications, many of which are made in China. Many of which are made in China. Some hospitals in the United States are already crucially low on respirator masks, according to Premier Inc., which serves medical supplies and equipment on behalf of hospitals and health systems. And China is the dominant supplier of raw ingredients needed for penicillin, ibuprofen, and even aspirin, drugs taken daily by millions of Americans and dispensed routinely to hospital patients. Think about that. They're telling you that the drugs that many of the Americans are prescribed at hospitals, penicillin, ibuprofen, and even aspirin, China is the dominant supply of the raw ingredients. Well, if we're having a supply slowdown, if they're operating at only 50%, if their exports are being cut in half, or they have to use these supplies for themselves, this is going to become a problem known as a supply problem. And there's 343 watching this, guys. Hit the like button. It helps the content get out there. Give me one second. I put it down here. Right? It says the mask. Let me just highlight this. I thought I highlighted. I guess I must have lost my highlights. Give me one second. Let's make this. It says the mass shortage highlights just how dependent the United States healthcare system is on goods from China. Premier was told last week that a Taiwanese factory it had a contract with was halting shipments to the United States. In addition, Chuan Powell, the group vice president of strategic supply engagement for Premier, said masks that are made in China are being diverted for use there. As a result, there's not as much supply to ship, he said. So you have to start thinking about you. You have to start thinking about the impact that this is going to have. It says hospitals in the United States have also increased their request. He said, adding that orders for respirator mask in the first five days of February had completely outstripped demand for a typical month. Mm -hmm. Highlight this. It says experts like Dr. Toner say supplies could easily become depleted, especially at smaller hospitals that tend to have less inventory of basic items like masks, gowns, and gloves. Hospitals have long struggled with shortages of injectable medications and staples like saline. In 2017, Hurricane Maria knocked out power to several pharmaceutical factories in Puerto Rico, leading to a shortage of saline bags. This is what you need to start thinking about this important. This is going this is going to have an impact if this turns into something big. Now if it doesn't, oh well. It's not that serious. If it does, it's, it's just it's not that serious. But again, guys, you need to be paying attention to the things that are being done over there and not understanding that these things could happen over here. The, the National Guard is already being deployed on the streets here. And I want to finish showing you what's happening with the shelves. <laughs>
Now just look at that line. Could you imagine having to wait out there in that line? <laughs> like imagine that you have to stand out there and wait in that line. And remember guys, I showed you what was happening for people having to wait in the line at um or to get their money out the bank. This potentially puts you at risk of getting infected, right? So now let's start putting our thinking caps on. And when you th when you start thinking about crypto, when people say like, oh, you know, well, why do you need Bitcoin or why do you need Ethereum, whatever your cryptocurrency may be? If I have my nano ledger, if I have my ledger, I put my ledger in my pocket, I get in my car, I drive to wherever I have to go. If I have my if I have my ledger, my hardware wallet, I hop on a plane, I take my money with me. And I can convert my money into whatever currency I want to convert it into. So if I want to go to Puerto Rico, if I want to get out of my out of my state or out of my country and I want to go to Africa, that's the importance of crypto. It's borderless, it's permissionless. I can't I can't carry 10 gold bars on a plane with me. Right? Gold is not as mobile. It's hard to transport gold around. My crypto. All I need is my little thumb drive. I put it in my pocket and I have my wealth in my pocket. I can go wherever I have to go. Even if I take a 20% drop in crypto, I still have my wealth. Like I can't take my gold with me. And see, this is one of the problems with hard assets like gold. Again, I'm a bull in gold. I love gold. That's what I invest in. I have a, I have a lot of gold and a lot of silver. But I also under, understand the power of having mobile money. Where I don't have to trust banks because remember, if we have a bank holiday or there's a run on the bank, you have to you have to take a step back and ask yourself, number one, do you want to have to go wait in this line to get your money out of a bank? Uh, I need that Bitcoin. Don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through everything right now. Right? So understand this is why diversification is important and understanding why you're investing in something, why you own something. Right. Gold and silver is a hedge against inflation. It is a hedge against my government. My government showing me they're going to stimulate the economy. That means they're going to print money. That means that they're going to go into the markets and they're going to buy up trillions of dollars of treasuries. They're telling me they're going to do that. OK, I got that. So I got my gold and silver. But if I have to leave my home because we're in martial law or because my town is extremely sick and I know a quarantine is coming. I put my money on my ledger. I'm out. I can have hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can have millions of dollars on my ledger and go. So this is why it's important to understand the value proposition. Because if there's a run on the bank, the bank's going to just close down. They're not going to give you your money. You don't want to be standing on these long lines out here with all of these potentially sick people. It's just, it, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to put two and two together to see that this could potentially turn into something really bad. Uh, people have not called on your buy now, but stacked by leverage, uh, leverage trading. It uh, seems like Africa, the only continent being spared by COVID-19. Possibly, I haven't really looked into it like that. Only thing with Bitcoin is it's getting hit because of it's a, a risk asset. This is a risk off environment. If you want to accumulate now, cool, but you may take a hit. Yeah, but this is why it's important to dollar cost average. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys Understand what you are investing in, right, guys? I'm not a person to tell you what you should or should not be doing, but I just want I, I showed you this before and I want to show you this again. <clears throat> so let's open this up, right? Bitcoin has had sell offs time and time again, going back all the way to 2012. This is I showed you guys look at the market cap, right? Let's go back, right? Let's flip this over real quick. 
you're dealing with an asset that's $143 billion. This is a tiny asset as far as market cap. This is tiny. Peanuts. $143 billion. The entire crypto market cap is $220 billion. Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are worth $220 billion combined. $220 billion combined. They are worth more, almost more, than the entire cryptocurrency market cap combined. All cryptos combined. These two men are worth more than Bitcoin itself. There's going to be a lot of volatility. Bitcoin's only 11 years old. So you can't, you can't start comparing it to a market cap like gold that has an $8 trillion market cap. There will be volatility. That's not what we're, we're talking about. There will be volatility. Like, um, uh, what's the name said? Someone just posted it here. I think it was a real uh, buoy. Yes. If you're trying to remember, I have a three to five year investment window with Bitcoin, with most of the crypto that I own. I'm just showing you the value proposition of the, the benefit of owning crypto. I can put it in my pocket and move. I can have a million dollars on a ledger and move. I can have $100,000 on the ledger and move quickly. Now, back to just showing you the crashes that has happened and it will continue to happen because you're dealing with an asset that is extremely small. So you're going to have a lot of volatility, especially because a lot of the mining is centralized in China and a lot of them are being forced to have to liquidate some of their crypto. But I just want to show you something. In 2012, Bitcoin went from $7 all the way down to $3.80, right? That was a 49% crash in 2012. It then bounced up to 1641 and crashed down to 710. And then it bounced all the way up to 4917 and crashed 33%. And then went from $33 to 7691 and crashed down to $50. It went from 50 up to 259 and crashed down to $45. It went from 45 up to 755 and crashed. You see a theme here with these crashes and then it goes up. And it crashes and it goes up and it crashes and it goes up and it crashes and it goes up. And then it went from 150. Look, it went from one thousand one hundred and sixty three dollars all the way down to one hundred and fifty two dollars. And then it went from one fifty two forty all the way up to one thousand three hundred fifty and eighty nine dollars. Right now, look, he said, I told you it was going lower. It's down a thousand. Yeah, but you didn't take the bet. I told you, let's pick a price, Mark J. You tell me your price is going to, and I'll bet you $100 of Bitcoin, right? So let's say you pick $5,000. I pick that it's going to hit 10 k before it hits 5 k Let's bet $100 in Bitcoin. But back to what I was saying. 891 then it went up to 2000 and it crashed. And it went from 1850 to 2980 and then it went all the way down to 1830 And it went from $1,830 down uh up to four thousand nine hundred seventy nine and down and then it went from two thousand nine hundred seventy two dollars up to seven thousand eight hundred eighty eight and then it came down to five and then it went from five thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars and it went to nine thousand nineteen thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars it does this time and time again you have to understand the power of dollar cost averaging and guess what you know what Bitcoin may not be for you. Ethereum may not be for you, right? You have to, you have, a, 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 exactly, $1,000 isn't a lot when you're dealing with an asset that's only $124 billion. But I, I digress. I don't want to get into that. I want you to know what you're investing in. This may not be for you. That's why I said this isn't financial advice. You have to think about what you're putting your money into and why you own it, right? I own this for the next three years to five years I have a window and I know that if I need my money right now I can I can access a hundred two three hundred thousand dollars from my ledger and I can leave my town the National Guard is coming let's flip this over so you guys can understand the National Guard is coming here to New York City under a line past April 15th. But we're going to begin with that community just outside of New York City under a containment order this morning where a cluster of cases has broken out. The National Guard will be on duty there in New Rochelle to help enforce the one mile radius under the order. Whit Johnson is there with the latest. Good morning, Whit. 
Michael, good morning. Officials tell us about 100 to 200 members of the National Guard will arrive here in New Rochelle tomorrow to help clean and sanitize schools, public areas, and even deliver food if needed. Governor Cuomo calling this deployment a dramatic effort to attack this. So if I need to get out of the state, I'm not going to be able to take my gold with me. I can't, I can't load $5,000 worth of gold and silver coins into my pocket or into my bag, right? But I can put five or ten or fifteen thousand dollars on the ledger, and I can just go convert it to whatever currency I need be wherever I decide to go. So I just want you guys to understand, um, you know, what you're investing in and why you're investing in these things. Why you need to have an understanding as to what you're putting your money into. And again, understanding Bitcoin's a volatile asset because it has a tiny market cap. So twenty billion dollars flows out is easy for it to drop 10, 15, 20 percent. That's not what I'm. Uh, looking at it for from that standpoint, right? Uh, the most powerful fact of Bitcoin is that it is a fixed issuance asset only gold and other metals can compare to. Yeah, it's the stock to flow ratio. I mean, if you look at the stock to flow ratio for gold, it would take over 62 years of current production to get that much gold out of the ground to equal the current amount of stock above ground. Uh, that's the thing about gold is that it's only used for money. And if the current stock orders remains the same. When you look at other commodities like oil or copper or zinc or aluminum, it can't be used as money because it's easy to produce more of it. Like if demand goes up in copper, oil or zinc, then they can just produce more of it. It's hard to find gold. It takes extensive amounts of production to find gold. So that's why gold was always used as money because it's scarce. It's rare. It's, it's hard to produce more of it. You can't just mine more of it and find it. It's hard to find it. It's easy to find copper, zinc, and aluminum. It's not hard. That's why those things aren't used for money. So, and uh, it's 331 of you watching this, guys. Make sure that you hit the like button. It helps the content rank in the search engines. And also, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now, um, some of you have asked me about a Bitcoin wallet, right? So give me one second. I'm going to show you where you can go. Um, I've been I've been developing some stuff on Bitcoin. I'm in the process right now of um, developing some applications that I'm trying to put on Bitcoin. But if you go here to Bitcoin, you can you can download a wallet right here on Bitcoin. Give me one second. Uh, so let me just put this in the chat for you and you just simply go here and you follow these instructions and you can actually go and run you a full note so let's paste it here in this way you can actually control your keys so make sure that you just simply go here and you follow the instructions and you can go and download you a you can run a full node in this way you will actually control your um keys i want to put something else up so go on there and you can download a wallet and this way you'll make sure that you control your keys because like they say not your keys not your bitcoin um simply you can go on youtube and watch videos of how to buy bitcoin on coinbase or on cash app and you'll just simply get your Bitcoin address and you send it to um, your Bitcoin wallet. Not complicated at all. So I put it in the chat in there, Bitcoin, your wallet. Play with that. And again, if you don't understand, don't mess with this. This is you, It's very possible that you can lose your Bitcoin. If you don't know what you're doing, and I'm going to put, I'll put a resource in the chat for you right now. Give me one second. I'll find a video that walks you through how you can buy on Cash App and send it to your wallet. Uh, Bitcoin Cash App. Give me one second. I'll put a video in the chat so you can go and watch this. Um, C-R-Y-P-T-O. It's hard to reach my keyboard. So, copy, 
And I'm going to drop this in the chat for you. Paste. This guy right here, he actually walks you through how you can buy your Bitcoin on Cash App and you can send it to your wallet. It's pretty straightforward. I would recommend you running a full node anyway. This way you can verify the actual transactions and you can actually look at all of the blocks. Uh, this is why it's important to run a full node because not your keys, not your Bitcoin. But it's pretty straightforward. If you buy from Coinbase, you can do the same thing. Yeah, you can do the same thing. You can buy it on Coinbase and you can send it to your um, your node. You're running a full node. So just run a full node and you'll be fine. You won't have this problem. Just go ahead to Bitcoin and you can actually have everything set up there. Right. So... Give me one second, guys. Somebody just posted a question. Run a full. Uh, 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 uh. So now put this in here too, so you can secure your wallet. And again, take your time with this stuff. You don't you this is you don't have to figure this out overnight. Right? Take your time, play with this stuff. Now someone put somebody said, hold on. When do you think BTC will decouple from the correlation with the stock market? That's a good question. That's a good question, Crypto YO. Um we don't know how Bitcoin is actually going to hold up in terms of you know, the correlation with the S&P 500, right? We don't need, we, we don't know that. Um, so if you if you can't see the link, go to bitcoin.org and you'll be able to just read the stuff on the site and it'll walk you through how to download and run a full node. If anything, I'll upload a video in the coming week how to do it. But um, we don't really know. We've never seen Bitcoin and how it will perform during a recession or during, um, you know, a downturn in the economy. The whole idea of it being digital gold, we know as of right now, it's not digital gold. It's trying to become digital gold. But right now, it's definitely uh, coupled with what's happening with marijuana stocks and what's happening with the S&P 500 for sure. Uh, there was a chart that was posted on Twitter that showed that every time marijuana stocks sold off, Bitcoin would sell off. Um, Bitcoin is a highly speculative, highly risky asset. So as of right now, we just don't know. Can I do it from a phone or I need a computer? You can run an SPV, but again, I would prefer that you um, use your computer, but you can definitely use your um, your phone. You can uh, down an uh, electronium wallet on your phone. This is why, again, guys, YouTube and Google is your friend, right? So let me show you something. Electronium wallet. So I'll put that in the chat for you as well. Uh, so you can go here. Uh, let's put this, let's copy this link for you. Copy the link. And I'll put this in here. Paste. So I'll put that in. That's a mobile wallet, Electronium. Um, the slight ramp today. I think the correlation breaks soon. We don't know. And that's why we have to take our time and let things happen. There's a video on Crypto Blood channel on YouTube that exposes what will happen with the bond market. You you can't really say what's going to happen to the bond market because with the Fed, the Fed can the Fed has so many tricks that it can implement. We have to allow this to run its course. What we do know is whatever the Fed does, whatever the US government does, we know for a fact it's going to lead to inflation. Whether it's a fiscal stimulus, whether it's monetary stimulus, it's money printing. And we know that money printing is debasing and devaluing of the dollar. So if Bitcoin or any of these crypto assets are ever going to show what it's going to be worth, we have to give it time for things to actually happen and for the rest of the market to wake up. So as of right now, it is definitely coupled in behaving and operating lockstep with the entire market. What we have to understand is that this is a multi-trillion dollar market versus Bitcoin is only a hundred and forty three billion dollar market. It's tiny. It's extremely small in terms of market cap. So easily, as I said to you guys before, 
you're dealing with guys, the top five people here, 114, 106, that's 220 billion, that's 300 billion, that's 370 billion, that's a, what this is, what, 435 billion? This is $435 billion right here, these top five guys, right? These top five guys are worth more than the entire crypto market cap. When you look at the pension, the, the top 300 global pensions are worth $18 trillion under management. If we can get 10% of that, 5% of that in the crypto space, you just you start thinking about it. So you guys, you have, you have to think about it. So again, I don't want to keep this stream going too long. Uh, I wanted to keep it here within this time period. So I just want to take a few questions and see what people have to say um, before we end the live stream. Because I know, guys, you don't, you don't watch more than uh, 35 minutes of the stream. So I want to keep these streams very, very small. Real talk, I have the video. It's uploaded. It will premiere tomorrow at around 2.30. Uh, have you seen ads from Visa that you send your Bitcoin to regular merchandise using a Visa card? No, I have not seen that yet. Uh, send me a link to that and I'll definitely take a look at it. Um, thank you for the donations, 100 for sure. Uh, can you use it without Bitcoin? Don't know what that means. If you buy from Coinbase, can you do the same thing? Yes, I answered that. Shoot, if the grid goes down, it's game over. Um, JT Coin Rings, your work is on point. Keep it up. Thank you so much. I appreciate the donation. That's a question that comes up a lot, right, guys? If the power grid goes down, ATMs don't work. Your gas, you can't go to the gas station and pump gas pumps, right? The gas pump runs on electricity. So if the grid goes down, your gas pump doesn't work. If the grid goes down, your ATM doesn't work. If the grid goes down, how are your trains going to work? If the grid goes down, how is your cell phone and your cell tower going to work? If the grid goes down, how is your refrigerator going to work? Like you're going to have much, much bigger problems if the grid goes down then as accessing your Bitcoin. Now understand, there's a Blockstream satellite. You can the, you can still run the Blockstream satellite from space. Blockstream has a satellite that will actually push out what's happening in the Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain. But trust me when I tell you, number one, the grid's not going to go down all across the world. Bitcoin is a global asset. So even if the grid goes down here in America, the grid's not going to be down in China. The grid's not going to be down in Africa. The grid's not going to be down in Europe. So even if parts of America, the grid goes down, I, I, there's no way I can see the entire United States power grid going down at one time. And if that does happen, we're going to have anarchy in the streets. That goes back to my point of, guys, if we have anarchy and we have the government stepping in and, and dragging people away like this, right? If, if, if we get to the point where the government is snatching families away, we have more important stuff to worry about than our crypto and our gold and silver and our portfolios. <laughs> right? Right? If if we if we have a, a major quarantine and we have military troops on the street doing this to people, we have we have more to worry about than that, right? If the police come and start snatching people up and flipping people on the street like this, we got more to worry about than our gold and silver coins. And what's going to happen with our 401ks? Now we have to start worrying about how are we going to protect ourselves? Right? This is this is what we have to actually start thinking about. You know, when, when, when the police is doing stuff like this, just snatching people up, now we have more important things to worry about than whether or not we are going to be able to you know, when they're quarantining people like this and they're literally stocking stuff up like this in front of people, we got more important things to worry about. I like my crypto because I can stuff it in my wallet and I can run to Canada. I can run to Mexico. I can run down to Honduras and I can have my wealth in my pocket. Uh, but yes, it's happening. We, I, I know, guys, in New Rochelle, it's happening right now. I'm just trying to get people to understand what's going on and why you need to be paying attention and, and starting to get prepared, preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, right? <laughs> so I'm not telling you guys, and again, I'm not saying this is in China, right? But the the um, the National Guard is here in New York now, and they're saying it's just for cleaning. So we don't know what it's going to be. I'm just simply saying to you guys, get prepared, prepare for the best and hope for the worst. That's all I'm telling you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Uh, Fred Williams with their staff, 5K I won't miss besides crypto. What are some of the companies I can place myself in uh, for long-term investing? Well, this isn't financial advice, but if I'm thinking about, you know, wars, pandemics, uh, I'm looking at companies like, you know, companies that like Procter & Gamble. They make a lot of cleaning supplies, right? I'm thinking of places like Costco, Walmart. You know, they're going to be sl uh, selling a lot of um, supplies, right? Uh, I'm looking at things like um, chip manufacturers, Qualcomm, right? Every every with 5G coming up, everything has microchips in it, right? Apple keeps creating these faster and faster chips. Think about the uh, the Tesla car, right? All all of those sensors you see on that car. It requires chips. So I want to be in a stock like Qualcomm, right? Like stocks that no matter what happens, those chips are going to be in all of the technology. Everything that we use has technology and 5G is going to require more and more uh, technology. So I would definitely tell you that those are things that you want to be investing in, you know, that type of stuff. Um, uh, also water, guys. Um, Michael Burry spoke about this. He is the guy from the uh, Big Short. And he was speaking about clean drinking water. There's a very, very limited amount of clean drinking water in the world. Uh, so investing in water is going to be a highly, highly, highly important asset uh, to invest in. Do you think the MOB would take a big hit if the coronavirus becomes bigger than what it is? Um, well, think about it. Yeah. I mean, they're already closing out NBA games, right? Like, Look at this. They're shutting down NBA games with no fans. That's that's no revenue. That means that the advertisers, who's going to want to watch an NBA game with no fans at the game, right? You, like, it takes away from the whole idea. You know, so it's called Qualcomm. Um, I'll spell it for you real quick. Let me go put it in here and I'll drop it in the chat. You can go look at it. So... Really, really, really good company. I mean, these semiconductors are going to be one of the best places to invest at all times. Even even with uh, Bitcoin mining, you got to think about like the chips and stuff, uh, the GPUs, etc. It's here, folks, except the Clorox is a good stock to invest in. Parts of the country will be shut down in a few weeks. Exactly, which is why you need to be paying attention from Mickey Mouse's go to it just postponed the game a few minutes ago. Yeah, the whole NCAA tournament, guys. So you need to start really paying attention. So um, don't get scared. Don't don't panic. Just have a plan. Right. This is why your Second Amendment is important. Uh, this is why having cash reserves are uh, Cash reserves are important, and this is why having Bitcoin and gold and silver is important, guys. It's happening in your face. Everything that I said was going to happen is happening. Uh, keep your cash on the side is the best strategy. Uh, but as far as investing right now, you know, I, I'm me personally, I'm putting some money into Ethereum and Tezos right now uh, because it just it gives you a good risk to reward. But that's about it. Um, so I'm going to leave the stream here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I don't want to keep the stream going too long because I know a lot of you don't watch too much of it. So go back to wrap things up. Right now we're experiencing a potential supply shock and a demand shock. The supply shock is going to come from people running out, wiping out the shelves, China not operating at full capacity. And then the demand shock is going to come from People staying home and being afraid and not going outside, not going to NBA games, not going to plays, not going to school, not going to work and not really wanting to spend money. And then when you look at the fiscal stimulus, when you give a trillion dollar tax cut to the rich and they don't take that money and invest it in their companies and making sure that they have a, a decent balance sheet and they're not over leveraged. Well, these companies are over levered and a 30 day shock can completely destroy the entire system. And now the feds cut interest rates so low, or they kept them so low. The fed doesn't have too much power as far as cutting rates because this isn't really a, a monetary problem and a fiscal problem. If you waive the payroll tax, you're not bringing in any revenue, which means you're going to have to print more money. And then you're going to have to go to the Fed, send those T-bills to them, and they're going to have to do more debt monetization with quantitative easing, which does what for us? Those of us who are investing in assets like precious metals, we're going to do better. So I will leave it there. Every day now going forward, guys, we're going to start doing a live stream every day at 7.30. 7.30 p.m. is going to be our days that we do live streams going forward. And I'm going to try to keep them under an hour 
to an hour and 15. So thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's donated and supported the live stream. Please go back and watch this stuff so you can get a better understanding. And please like this video, share this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, join my mailing list in the description below. And uh, follow me on Instagram so therefore you can we can communicate and we can share information back and forth with each other. Have a blessed day. Protect yourselves. Be smart. Don't be pa don't panic. Don't be fearful. Be smart. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst. For if the worst doesn't happen, at least you're still prepared.